I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're speaking with Tavia Lynn Callison. She is a creative storyteller and a passionate music teacher. She masterfully combines her love for music and teaching in the captivating book, Magical Music Planet. It's inspired by her personal experiences and her inventive approach to teaching musical symbols to children. She has woven a tale that whisks young readers into a universe where music has mysteriously disappeared, only to be restored by the courageous and determined three young heroes. We are delighted to have Tavia join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Booksavi International for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel. Tavia, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. The pleasure to be here. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Loved your book. Um, oh. Tell me, was it years in the making? Was this something you dreamed up one night? How did that process go? Um, oh, it, it took many turns. And it's. I think the beginning is when I was six years old, I said there was a piano. And I, and I said, can I have piano lessons? And my mother was strict, so she said, yes, but you must practice an hour a day, every day, holidays, your birthday. It's like brushing your teeth. And somehow I was stupid enough to sign up for that. So because I had no voice, I uh, musical voice, but I stuck with it. And, um, and the symbols themselves looked interesting. They captivated me. And then as, when Sesame Street came out, I said, oh, my goodness, that's what's needed with the musical symbols so the kids can really read these symbols. So over a long period of time, I developed their names and personalities and Melody. First was Alice and Music Lamb and Fortunately, Melody and Music Land and then the planet. So it's been layered and layered and layered. Um, Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, it's years in the making. You can tell it is such a beautiful book. It's well thought out. Tell the folks at home who are watching what the book is about. It's about um, two planets, Earth and M Mutonia, which is a music planet. Mm -hmm. And the book opens up there and something happens between there are these princesses and their triplets. And one's madly in love with Lord Barkley. And he's, he just before the wedding, he says, I don't want you to inherit your superpowers from your dad. And she says, oh, there's three of us. We're triplets. I won't accept it. And P.S., she's forced to accept it because she was first born by 20 seconds. And that's ordained that it has to go to her. So the father said, well, let's not tell Barkley. Let's wait till after the marriage. And I will man have a man-to-man -man talk with him. And, uh, of course, the whole thing blows up. And that causes planet earth to mysteriously have no musical sounds so you see the rock stars starting to play and they're, and they're stomping on their guitars and embarrassed and in, in las vegas a singer is trying to sing and suddenly no sound comes out so early on the next morning mysteriously the music all musical sounds vanished mm. and um that leaves three special kids um melody bell harmony chord and just in time and those are your three elements of music and they're thrust through middle c through a secret sound wave called system which is music spelled backwards Mm -hmm. And they go and land on the planet and they have to figure it out, and bring music back to Earth. So that's it, basically. 
And it's a wonderful story. It's very imaginative. Uh, you've created a whole unique world here. Have you envisioned this at all as a uh, film, perhaps an animated film or a series? I think children would love it. Yes, actually, that's how my brain works. It's very mm -hmm. visual. And so as I was writing it, I was seeing it visually. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I I I think yes. And uh, and music being sound, um, yeah, it lends itself to to being something in a visual sense. I did originally, I, I skipped a little part. I came up with um it's called um it's music musical wannabes the keyboard kids mm -hmm. and it was entertainment at first because i was trying to do something like uh, sesame street mm -hmm. and so i do have a separate thing that could be uh, sold differently and it's entertainment where the kids there's games and um songs and and then they learn to draw the symbols so there's that as well telling a story early on about your mom insisting yeah. that you practice one hour every day whether it's your birthday or a holiday but that kind of discipline is needed if a child is going to learn to be accomplished on a little instrument tell me what are your thoughts we need more moms like your mom nowadays i do credit my mom for this whole thing, I, and um, and then I started teaching piano to my sister, and that went out to all the neighbors. And then I learned to earn money. And then she said, "If you put it in the bank, we'll match it." I mean, it, it wasn't very much money, but I do credit her for for these very good um, disciplines. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she was a forward-thinking so, lady. She knew you needed to practice your music. You needed to save money. Particularly, you need to save money sometimes if you're going to be a musician. So that was all great advice. Tell me about your work as a teacher. Uh, you have such a love for music. You have such a creative brain and such a, a passionate spirit. I'm sure you just love collaborating with young people and uh, teaching them uh, piano, I presume, right? Yes, piano. Well, at the beginning, I started out just with whomever wanted lessons, but I divided that into two eventually, where I developed the keyboard kids, which I did after school in someone's home, a group of kids. And that was very successful. That was pre-instrument. Mm -hmm. Then as I got older, I had less patience. Mm -hmm. And I eventually just said, I'm only teaching adults mm -hmm. and the keyboard kids. So I sort of separated after many years yep. of doing yep. that. Absolutely. I guess sometimes the adults are more motivated if they're doing it a little bit later in life. They truly want to learn and realize the way to get to Carnegie Hall is practice, <laughs> practice, practice, right? Are you I working? Have Go ahead. Um, I was just going to share um, one of my students. Um, I received a phone call and she's the mother of it. And she said, um, we just got a baby grand piano. And my daughter is five and a half, and uh, she'd like piano lessons. I said, no, she's too young. And we hung up. Then she called back. She said, well, if my daughter's too young, can I start? And she said she, she works in a restaurant. So I'm thinking she's a waiter. And she, so I said, well, you... If you practice faithfully just 20 minutes a day, you will move forward. Then the other thing she said, can I play classical? I'm only interested in classical music. I said, well, you're going to be starting with one note. <laughs> I said, but there's a book out. There's a series that I play all this and you play the one note and we get like Leave the Strong or the classic. And later I turns out she's the twin sister of Peter Morton, which is a hard rock cafe. Wow. So when she said she's working in a restaurant, well, she's working in <laughs> that family business. Yeah, that's so, quite a restaurant. Good, yeah, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. I did and, teach Marlon Brando's show, and that's kind of interesting. That is. Um, I was on my way. It was in Cheviot Hills, a suburb of uh, Los Angeles. And a little adorable girl had her bicycle, and she had to kind of climb up the hill to get in the garage. And she said, do you think I'm going to make it? I, I said, I think you will. And it was just a sweet. Um, so anyway, the mother said she'd like to have piano lessons, and and I gave her piano lessons. And she had the natural well articulation where she knew how to lift it and leave the keyboard with the rest. And that was like natural. That mm. never happened. Amazing. Eventually I get a phone call from Marlon Brando <laughs> and he said, I have another child, her name is Cheyenne. And um, I'd like you to come to the house and can you teach her? And she, he said, I, she can have a lesson every day because she doesn't live here. We're we're on vacation here. I live on the island. That's where she. So I started her as well, and they both they looked alike except for their hair color. They articulated the same touch on the piano. It was amazing. That never happened. Navia Lynn Callison has written an amazing book. It is a book that you and your children will both love. It is called Magical Music Planet. It is an inspirational story, a magical experience that children will just love, talking about a universe where one day, mysteriously, music just disappears. And it's up to three young heroes to find the answer and the solution. I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time, this time until next time, on Spotlight.